Oh, bless God, I just finished the sermon on life and death. Jesus is the good shepherd. And you're going to listen to this word in a moment from now. And the good shepherd came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But we're going to go back right to the book of beginnings and find out what happened in the garden with Adam. And death is actually a choice. Because eating from the tree of knowledge and good and evil doesn't bring you knowledge of good and evil. God Almighty said it will bring you death. So death is a choice, but you can choose to live. Remember in Deuteronomy 30, God Almighty spoke to Moses and he said, choose life. So why don't you just choose life? Stay tuned and listen to this message. May it really bless you as you continue to listen to this awesome series on life and immortality. God bless you. For the last couple of uh, months, especially two years ago, we did a whole series on immortality in a row. We did eight sermons in a row, and then we did four again, and now three again. And I think this will be the fourth or the fifth one, I don't know. But it seems like we can't run away from the fact that Jesus came to give us life. Everlasting. Could you say ever? Okay. Ever? Ever? Ever. You know what does ever sounds like? Ever. Okay. Say lasting. Have you bought something and then the packet it says this will last you know and money back guarantee say lasting. lasting it means it can't break if it breaks it's not lasting now what about everlasting Come on. Come on. Wow. it means it can never 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 break so if Jesus came to give us everlasting life it can't there can't be a breakage in it it means if I die I broke the everlasting so I have life and then an afterlife. But what about everlasting life? So if you were not here for the last four teachings, just take this. Jesus came, Romans 8 verses 1 through 3 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the promptings of the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, has set me free or made me free. Everyone said free. Free. From the law of sin and death. If you go to John chapter 10, what would be the scripture that stands out? Stands out? Huh? Verse 10. What does verse 10 say? Come on, you can all quote it. You in your house, you can throw us a quotation there through the TV. Come on, John 10, 10. That is the scripture. Okay, can I read it to you? He says, the thief comes only, I'm in the Amplified, the thief comes only in order. The thief come, comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus said, I came that they may have. Now listen to the Amplified, puts another word in there and I hope somebody will take it. Enjoy. Have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the fill till it overflows. There's a lot of people that have found out they have life, but there's a lot of people that don't still enjoy it. You know, they're still just existing in this life. But it's time to realize that Jesus came to give us life and to enjoy it and to have it in abundance till it overflows. What did the thief came for? In order, in order to steal, kill and destroy. So tonight, I, I want to draw a little table here and by the grace of almighty god i believe that we're gonna go in something that's really gonna bless you out of your position of death tonight okay the thief comes to steal and the word we want to put there to kill okay jesus came that you might have okay if somebody kills you what are you <laughs> nice <laughs> Very intelligent. So the thief comes to steal, kill. If he kills you, you're dead. Jesus came to give you life. If he gives you life, you will. And he calls that everlasting life. He calls that immortal life. What else does he call it? Okay, abundant. What else? Eternal. Eternal. 
Okay? Does all those words sound like there's no break, isn't it? Everlasting, immortal. Now, immortal means not liable to death. Abundant, eternal. That's the type of life that Jesus came to give you. The thief has come to give you just one kind of death. So if you're dead, you're dead. You can't be dead, deader than deadest. If you're dead, you're dead. You know? The message Bible says, a thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I came so they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamt of. Okay, everybody in this house say, I want that type of life. Okay, what type of life? Everlasting life, immortal life, abundant life, eternal life. Come on, when Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, this was the story. He tells him, he says, uh, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Okay, and die on the cross. He said, for God so loved the world. He repeats it in verse 14 and again in verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's four weeks now that I can't get away from John 3, 16. Can you believe it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life what happens if you die you perish your body sees corruption god came that you should not perish but have everlasting eternal immortal everlasting life the context of john 10 is where we're going to stand tonight and trust god to really speak to us john 10 verse 11 i am the good shepherd the good shepherd risks and lay down his own life for the sheep now that tonight we got to stand still at that portion of scripture the good shepherd came for a purpose to lay down his life for his sheep right jesus came and he laid down his life for us so on this side Jesus died for us. Has anybody ever heard that slogan or that saying? Somebody saying, Jesus died for me. What is coming up in your mind when you say Jesus died for you? He died for your sin. That is normally what people would say. Jesus died for me. And the thing they will connect it to is Jesus died for my sin. But Romans 8 verses 1 through 3 says more than just sin. We started quoting it, so let's finish it now. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Maybe we must write all the words down there. He says, no condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus has made me free. Okay? From what? The law of sin and death. And we discussed it lately for the last four weeks. How is it that people say, Jesus died for my sin? How is it that so few people say, Jesus died for my death? So if he died for my sin, it means he takes my sin away. If he died for my death, it means he took my death away. Okay, can I repeat that once more? If I say, Jesus died for my sin, it means I don't have to sit with sin. If I say, Jesus died for my death, it means I don't have to die anymore. So he came to set me free. Everybody say free. free. Come in four weeks now we shouted it out. Freedom. From what? From sin. Are you free from sin? Or you're still living in condemnation? So if you're free from sin and no more condemnation, why can't we just get free from death and have no condemnation for death? Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 says the following. Jesus Christ tasted death. For every person. Okay? So, if I say Jesus died for me, he tasted death for every person. So, every person here, you don't have to die. Every person here, you don't have to sin. 
How many believe you, the, the sin question has been dealt with? So why can't we just go a little bit further and reckon the death question has also been dealt with? Okay, so Jesus is the good shepherd. And if we look at the life of the good shepherd, he laid down his life for his friend. So uh, it doesn't say he died for us. He laid it down. Nobody could kill him. Philippians 2 says he had to become obedient to death. That's why God exalted him and gave him a name which is far above every other name. Okay, let's just read on. Everyone say, I want to live immortal life, eternal life. Everlasting life. Abundant life. Okay? Everybody say, no condemnation. I'm free from sin. And I'm free from death. Okay, verse 18. Look at Jesus. He's talking to the people. He said, no one takes my life away from me. On the contrary, I lay it down voluntarily. I put it from myself. Listen to this. I am authorized and have power to lay it down, to resign it. And I am authorized and have power to take it back again. These are the instructions, the orders which I have received as my charge from my father. So when John saw him on the Isle of Patmos, Revelation chapter 1 verse 19, he said he had the keys of death and hell. Now we have it that Jesus fought the devil for three days and then he took the keys away from the devil. And we have all the stories that people preach and psych people up how Jesus went into hell and for three days there was this battle and then he took the keys away from the devil. No, no, no. Jesus said, I got the authority from my father to rule over death. I can lame, I can resign my life to death and say, death take me, but I can just as well come and take my life back from death. Now, Romans 8 and 11 says, if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is now in us, he will also quicken our mortal bodies. So if mortality is quickened, it becomes immortality. So when Jesus comes, the Bible says, this mortal will put on immortality. Corruption will put on incorruption. In other words, those that are dead will come back to life. But those that are still alive will just keep on living better than ever before. Let's go now to verse 4 and 5. Jesus says, this good shepherd... When he has brought his own sheep outside, he walks on before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger, but will run away from him because they do not know the voice of a stranger or strangers or recognize their call. The thief comes to kill Jesus came to give us life. Jesus died for us so that we can now live. The law of the spirit of life has made me free. You'll see in a minute why I lay emphasis on this. Made me free from the law of sin and the law of death. If you didn't hear what I'm going to say, you're going to miss a lot of teaching here tonight. So Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. Then he says something else. The voice of a stranger. They don't know. The one translation says they don't even recognize it. Okay. So this stranger, let's call him tonight a thief. Because normally a thief is a stranger. That's why the police look, look so long to find him. Okay. <laughs> It's normally not your friends that break into your house and steal, is it? It's normally a stranger that comes and steal, okay? So the thief is a stranger. So Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And my sheep hear my voice. In other words, the voice is made up out of words. So the words coming forth out of the mouth of the shepherd that forms his voice are heardable and understandable by the sheep. 
if I declare that Jesus Christ is my shepherd, if I say the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me besides the word. If the Lord is my shepherd, I will not know the voice of a stranger. In other words, the words coming forth from the thief will be ununderstandable to me. I will not even be able to hear it. What did the good shepherd come to give to us? Life. What does the thief come to do? Kill. Okay? So if I hear the voice of the shepherd, what will I hear coming forth from his voice? Life. If I listen to the voice of the stranger, what is his voice? De- kill. Die. Death. So if I don't hear the voice of a stranger, I will never hear the words death. I will never hear the words die. I will never hear the words dead because it is not in the vocabulary of the good shepherd. He said, I came to lay my life down. Then I've got the authority to my father to take my life back so that I can now give your life for the son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever now believes in him shall have everlasting life and shall not perish. In other words, if I believe, I shall not. I shall not have that. But I shall have this. Okay? So, again, the confusion that's been in the church for many, 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 many years. In Luke 11, verse 25, Jesus standing at the tomb of Lazarus, he's addressing two type of crowds. He says, if you believe in me, though you were dead, yet shall you live. Okay? Then he says, if you believe in me, you shall never die. Do you believe this? Okay? There's two groups. Jesus says, if you believe in me, you can die and live again in the resurrection. So there is Two types of lives in the book of John. There's resurrection life and everlasting life. Okay? If we get to it tonight, if we don't, we'll get to it tomorrow afternoon. But there's resurrection life for those who believe that they can die and be resurrected. Do you believe this? Then Jesus said, but there's another crowd. If you believe in me, you shall never die. Do you believe this? So there's a group that still have a confusion because they still hear the voice of a stranger. How do we know that? Because people say, the devil stole that person. People say, the devil has got it right to do this. The devil has stolen from us. How can the devil steal from you if you're not supposed to hear his voice? If you're supposed to have abundant life, and the shepherd leads you to green pastures, still waters, a table prepared in the presence of your enemies, your head anointed with fresh oil, your cup running over, his rod and staff comforts you. Oh man, goodness and mercy following you. It means it's a good life. But the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. The context of the killing and the life is the good shepherd. And the context of the good shepherd is, My sheep hear my voice. They will not hear the voice of a stranger. So the words coming forth from my mouth is life. The words coming forth from the stranger's mouth is death. Mm -hmm. Go back to John 8. Wow, man. Wow, this is going to be so great. This is going to be so great. I I just feel, I I, want to go ahead of myself and preach a little and come back again. Come sit and listen a little and jump, jump up and shout. Right. Did you get the little thing that I tried to tell you tonight? I don't know how to try and explain it. Uh, the, the, the whole context of John 10.10, 10, the context for tonight's thing is the shepherd. And the context of the shepherd is his voice. And the context of the voice is whose voice do you recognize? You're not supposed to hear the voice of the stranger. You're not supposed to. Uh, Dr. Sillen Jetty uh, sent me an SMS before the meeting. He said, Kubis, man, uh, this stuff you're teaching. He says, uh, we are so bound, even in our marriage vows. We proclaim death. 
Because everybody believe we're going to die. He says, so would you please marry us all over again so that we can just change our marriage vows. Okay. Are you in John chapter 8? We're going to go John 8, then maybe 6, then maybe 3, then maybe 1. Just turn back in John tonight, just the first couple of chapters. Right, verse 10. Again, the context here is a woman caught in the act of adultery. You've heard the story over and over and over, okay? And the Pharisees caught this woman, brought her, threw her at the feet of Jesus, and they challenged Jesus with the law. I hope we're going to get to the law but tonight. Because if you can understand that you're free from the law, oh, I can't run now. I must first do John before I can do that. They said, the law says, stoner. But what do you say? Remember, Jesus wrote in the ground, and then he stooped down and wrote in the ground again, and then they started turning away the one after the other till no one was left. So we pick up the story. Hmm? Verse 10. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto a woman, Where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Now you got to run with me. Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But then he brings something in. For the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. So there's two laws. The one brings you life. The one brings you death. And in Christ Jesus, you are free from the one if you can take it that you are not condemned. If you can take it that you are not condemned. If you struggle with condemnation, you're going to struggle with a law that brings sin and death. If you believe the voice of the good shepherd, when he lifted up himself, he said to the woman, where's the people that wanted to condemn you? She said, no one. He says, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. My words, go and don't fall again for the law of sin and death, but live in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. If anybody can hear the words of the good shepherd tonight, all right? Verse 12, amplified. Once more, Jesus addressed the crowd. So in other words, he must have said it already. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me, will not be walking in the dark, but he will have the light which is life. Okay? He that follows me. Who do we follow? The good shepherd. What will happen if we follow the good shepherd? Apart from green pastures and apart from still waters, apart from refreshing soul, apart from anointed head, apart from a table in front of your enemies, apart from that, you will have the light, which is the life. If you follow, man, who do you follow? The shepherd. You will not be in darkness. But what will you have? Man, the light. And he said, that light is the life. The light, which is the life. Now, to understand that, we're just going to remind ourselves. Remember in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. The Word was God. And everything that was made was made by Him. And without Him was nothing made that was made. You know? And then verse 4. In him was life. That's the beginning. And this life. Okay. In him was life. And this life was the light. But now he just changed it around in John chapter 8. He says, if you follow me, you will walk or will have the light, which is the life. In the beginning, in him was life the life which was the light 
So Adam walked in the light of Almighty God because he had life. Man lost the life of God. He lost the light of God. Jesus came, the Bible says, for those that sat in darkness, a great light came up. So Jesus came and said, I came as a light into the world. But people love darkness more than light because their deeds were evil. But everybody that loves the light comes to the light so that their deeds might be revealed that they are done from God. So he says, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, the good shepherd, he is the light. Then you will not walk in darkness, but what will you have? The light, which is the life. So what is death? Darkness. Though I go through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say you shall go through death. He said a valley of a shadow of death. It means the shadow of death will try to cast the shadow on you. But even that he will take you through. He said he will take you through the valley of the shadow of death. Not death. The shadow of death. So he says, if you follow me, the light will be so great. Even if a shadow comes over you, I will take you through. Not the real thing. Even the shadow because you will not walk in darkness. But you will have the light which is the life. So he's supposed to take you through every onslaught on your life the thief comes to kill jesus said he's not supposed to kill he can come to kill but i will take you through that shadow so that you can come out everlasting unbreakable eternal continuous immortal life verse 21 therefore he said again to them i am going away and you will be looking for me And you will die in your sin. Where I am going, it is not possible for you to come. At this, the Jews began to ask among themselves, will he kill himself? Is that why it says where I'm going, it is not possible for you to come? He said to them, you are from below, I am from above. You are from this world, I am not of this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sin. For if you not believe, if you do not believe that I am He, whom I claim to be, if you do not adhere to, trust Him and rely on me, you will die in your sin. Another time. Okay? Then they say to Him, Who are you anyway? He just told them, I am the light, which is the life. He just told them, If you follow me, you will not walk in darkness. In other words, you will not die. But then he tells them, hey, listen, but you're going to die. But you're going to die. But you're going to die. You don't have to die. But he turns around and says, but you're going to die. But you're going to die. But you're going to die. Because you don't believe in me and you're going to stay in your sin. So you're going to die. Right? Verse 31. So Jesus said to those Jews who had believed on him. Everybody say he's talking to believers. Believers. If you abide. The King James would say continue. The NIV would say hold to. Another one would say keep. If you keep, if you continue, if you hold to. If you abide in my word. Now, this is where you've got to start listening to the second part of the message. Then are you my disciples indeed. And, now the NIV would say there, then. If anybody's got the NIV, it will say then. Then you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Romans 8 verse 1 through 3 for the third time tonight. The law of the spirit of life. There is no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life. Has made me free. From the law of sin and death. Okay. There is no condemnation. Because there is two laws. The one is the spirit of life. 
that made me free from the law of sin and death. Why is it, if this is so simple, that we don't get it, that people go for it? Why would people argue and argue and argue? For Jesus comes and he says, you've got to follow the shepherd. You've got to hear the voice of the shepherd and not the voice of the stranger. The stranger comes to kill you. He wants you to die. But I have come that you might have life. But if you follow the good shepherd, he will walk and have the light, which is the life. Amen. Huh, I mean, okay, so he says, if you hear my voice and stay in my word, man, keep, abide, stay, continue, hold fast, any other translation, to what? My word. What will happen then? You shall know, man. And the truth that you know shall set you free. You know what? There's a lot of truth in this book that we call Bible. But there's very few that know the truth in this book. So it's all right to preach the word of God. It's all right to say the Bible says or Jesus says. But do you know the truth? So how would we know the truth if we keep his word? Continue in his word. Now, what does continue mean? I want to put it to the good shepherd. If you follow me. So if you continue from where you started. If you continue to follow me. In what? In my word. So if you keep on listening to what I have to say. If my words that I say will stay in you. What will then happen to you? You shall then know the truth. And that truth you know because you keep on hearing what I say will then set you free. So the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death. Come on, get it. What was the context of John 8? He says to them, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die. But he says, if you believe in me, you'll have the light, which is the life. But you've got to continue, follow me. You've got to keep my word, abide in my word. And if you abide in my word, then you will start knowing the truth. And the truth that you then know, because you keep on hearing the same thing over and over and over. The truth that you keep in, the word that you keep and abide in, will then set you free. You see, so you've got to come to the place of total freedom. How? By keeping the word, abiding in the word, staying in the word, continuing in the word. How will we continue the word? By keep on listening to the voice of the shepherd. So I've got to keep on following the shepherd. If I don't hear his voice and if I hear the voice of a stranger, what will the stranger do? He will kill me. But if I don't hear the voice of a stranger, I will live. Jesus says, they don't, my sheep hear my voice. They don't hear the voice of a stranger. <laughs> so why do people come and say, uh, well, uh, don't you want to buy this insurance? When you die, no, no, then I'm not here to have the money. <laughs> Forgive me if you sell that stuff to people. Uh, when I'm not here anymore, I want you to do this and this for me. So where are you going? Why would people go out of their way to prepare for abundant death when Jesus came that you might have abundant life? If you take this policy out, you just pay 200 rand a month and when you die. So we are preparing to be killed. And you shall, everybody say truth. truth. Truth will set me free. They answered him, we are Abram's offspring, descendants, and have never been in bondage to anybody. What do you mean by saying we will be set free? Jesus answered them, I assure you most solemnly I tell you, whoever commits and practices sin is the slave of sin. Listen to the words, slave of sin. Now a slave does not remain in a household permanently. 
A slave does not. What is the slave in this context? The one that sins. He says, he that's a slave of sin is not free. Then he goes on to say, a slave does not abide. What is the context of the slave? The one that sins. A slave does not remain in a household permanently. The son does remain forever. Can I read it to you in the normal NRV? Very simple translation. Very nice translation. Now a slave has no permanent place. A slave, which is it? The guy that's still dominated by the law of sin and death, has no permanent place in the family. But a son, a son, a son, but a son, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Did you get what he's trying to say? He say, as long as you are still bound in your frame of mind by the law of sin and death, well, we're all going to die and then we're going to go to heaven. He says, you can't stay in this family. You've got to depart sometime. He says, but if you understand what a son is in the house, you will abide and remain forever. So he says, when he comes, those who are alive and remain will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We shall not all die, but we shall all change. There's a group that must remain. There's a group that must be in the house. There's a group that must stay in the house. But there's a group that can't abide in the house, that will not stay in the house. Who are they? The people that still understand the law of sin and death. But if I don't understand it anymore, if I don't hear the voice of strangers anymore, I only follow the good shepherd. The only thing I know he's doing He's leading me where I can find pastures to live. Okay. Verse 37. So I know that you are Abram's offspring, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Yet you plan to kill me because my word has no entrance, makes no progress, does not find any place in you. Right? They say we are not illegitimate. Verse 42. Jesus said to them, But if God were your father, you would have loved me and respect me and welcome me gladly. Verse 43. Why do you not understand what I say? King James, why do you not understand my word? Are you there? Why don't you understand my word? Hmm? Verse 44. You are of your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. Come on, I'm dropping all these truths. And does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks what is natural to him, he's a liar. And he's the father of lies and of all that is false. But because I speak truth, you do not believe me. Whoever is of God listens to God and to the words that I speak. We started off with the thief comes to kill. That's he wants you to die. Jesus came that you might have life and that more abundantly. Jesus comes, he says, if you listen to my voice, the words that I speak, you know, he says, you will not know this voice. This voice. Okay? This one is a stranger. This one is the good shepherd. Okay? So Jesus comes and he says to the group that does not know his voice, he says, you're going to die. He says, but on this side, if you will keep my word, you will know truth. And this truth that you know will make you totally free. Free from what? Sin and death. But he said, this group, you will die in your sin. 
Why? Because you don't believe my word. He says, so my word doesn't find an entrance in you. So he says, my word, if it finds an entrance, okay, you will have what? Truth. What will the truth do? Set you free. Free from what? Sin and death. On this side, you have the devil. As a father, he's a liar and a murderer. Oh man, it's coming, coming together now. A liar and murderer. On this side, you will know truth and you will be free. On this side, you will hear lies and you will be murdered. You will die. On this side, you will, you will abide and you will remain. On this side, you cannot remain here. You got to die and go to heaven. Oh, but the devil is their father. No, he's talking to believers. He's not talking to sinners here. He said they're going to die in their sin, but they are believers. He spoke to the people that believed in him. He said, you got to continue in my word if you got to skip this side. But if you don't continue, you will still live, but you've got to go through this side of dying in your sin. For the law of sin and death kills you. Have you seen how quickly Christians get condemned? Guilt situations, you know, judged by themselves. Because we, we take all these laws and we make it for ourselves and we never get to total freedom. How many can truly say, I'm free? I'm free. I'm not guilty. I'm not condemned. I'm free. I know who my shepherd is and I know what his plan is for me and I know he's leading me and where I'm going to go is going to be still waters. It's going to be green pastures. It's going to be fresh oil. It's going to be goodness and mercy. Follow me. My enemies are going to be destroyed. I'm going to have a table feasting while enemies are attacking me. I can go maybe through a shadow but I'll never go through death itself. Maybe through a shadow but not death itself because he's rod and star comforts me he's my good shepherd his word will continue in me so I will abide in the house I will not depart from the house because his word departs me but the voice of the devil now he calls him the devil you listen to the voice of your father the devil he's a liar and a murderer right from the beginning but what was Jesus right from the beginning the light which was the life or the life which was the light. So there's these two contrasts. The one is light and life. The one is dark and death. Yeah. The one is truth. The one is a liar. Yeah. The one is a murderer. The one is a life giver. For God so loved the world that he gave. So what we can have? Eternal life. Everlasting life. Okay. Let's go on to verse 51. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Let's go to verse 51. It's good stuff. I wanted to do a lot there in the other translation. But let's just do I assure you, verse 51, most solemnly I tell you, if anyone, listen to this, observes my teaching, my word, live in accordance with my message, keeps my word another time, he will by no means ever see and experience death. But you see, you've got to hear it and hear it and hear it because you got to keep it and continue it and hear it another time and how many times have you heard when we all die how, since you were small you heard the message of death how many times have you heard the message of life come let's be serious let's be serious there's people that say oh man I'm the only one preaching life no there's hundreds of prophets all across the globe that's been preaching immortality for many many years Remember Elijah said, Lord, I'm the only prophet left. And God said, there are 2,000 that didn't bow the knee to Baal. So today, there are many prophets proclaiming this truth. It's been there for years. But it wasn't proclaimed boldly and loudly. Now we have television. We have tapes and CDs and videos. We can proclaim and people can hear the good news. Of the Son of God that came that you might have life. Oh, Kubis, but I want to die. Well, die. You're welcome. Just die. 
It's the easiest thing in the world. Stop breathing. <laughs> Verse 52. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you are under the power of a demon. <laughs> Abram died and also the prophets. Yet you say, If a man keeps my word, he will never taste of death into all eternity. I tell you the truth. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Listen to verse 52 in the NIV. At this the Jews exclaimed, Now we know that you are demon possessed. <laughs> Abram died and so did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps your word, he will never taste death. I've tried once more to see if I can get some enthusiasm. All right, listen yeah. to this. They say, now we know that you are demon possessed. Because you say, if anyone keeps your word, they will never taste of death. What did Jesus say? If you believe my word, if you keep my word, if you abide in my word, you will never die. What did they say when he said that? They said, you are demon possessed. So I'm challenging anybody here. I'm preaching tonight. Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you will never taste death. Am I demon possessed? As according to the scripture, Jesus said, the devil, when he comes and talks to you, he's a liar and a murderer from the beginning. But from the beginning, Jesus is the light, which is the life. So which voice are you listening to and which voice can you discern tonight? He says, they will not know the voice of a stranger, my sheep. They will not even understand his voice. So what is the voice of a stranger? He is lying and he's a murderer. And Jesus said, if you abide in that law, you will die. Genesis chapter 2, the beginning. God now made man, put him in the garden, and now he gives him some commands. Verse 9. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Then there's a semicolon or a colon. It depends on which translation you have. New sentence. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Verse 17, God says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now this is the revelation that I want to drop tonight. So I did everything to come to the scripture. So I hope you are with me and, you, and I didn't miss you. The word of the Lord come and he says, there's many trees that's now growing in the garden. It's good for food. You can all eat of it. But there's another tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. Now listen to the revelation. He did not say, Pastor Song, that if you eat of this tree, you'll get knowledge of good and evil. Okay, if you think this is simple, this is one of the greatest keys that God gave me in this whole set of messages. He did not say, if you eat of this tree, you'll get knowledge of good and evil. He said, if you eat of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, you shall die. He didn't say, you're going to gain knowledge. He said, you shall die. All right? Okay. Are you ready? In brackets. Be excellent in what is good. Be innocent of evil. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. So we don't have to know evil. So if we go to that tree, we will not gain knowledge of evil. We will die. So people try their best to gain knowledge of evil, to teach the church well, to stay away from evil. Okay, once more. So, in gaining knowledge of evil, 
you don't get it from eating from that tree what you the fruit you get from the tree of evil knowledge of good and evil is death you don't get knowledge of evil you're preparing yourself for death but if i gain good where do i get it from life more abundantly from who the good shepherd i am the good shepherd but of the tree of life maybe it's not said in so many words but i tell you the teachings of eating of the tree of knowledge and good and evil is to now now men can discern between good and evil he did not say that not once he said you'll die he didn't say you'll know the difference between good and evil right let's go to chapter 3 now the serpent was more subtle and crafty than any living creature of the field which the lord god had made and he satan the devil the serpent the dragon said to the woman can it really be liar that god said you shall not eat from every tree of the garden hmm? okay The voice of a stranger you're not supposed to recognize, heard, or listen to. But the voice of the good shepherd is the voice you're supposed to hear, listen to. If I hear the voice of the good shepherd, he's leading me to light, which is life, which is everlasting life, which is no death. But if I listen to the voice of a stranger, he's only got one thing in mind. That's stealing, killing, and destruction. Okay, so here comes the stranger. He's an alien. They don't know him. He says, is it true? So he's sowing discord and doubt. Is it true that God said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Holy Spirit. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden truth but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god has said you shall not eat neither shall you touch it lest you die Mm -hmm. truth so who comes to kill the thief who is the devil from the beginning a A murderer and a liar okay what did jesus say if we listen to his word and keep his word we will be set free from the law of sin and death and we will have life and life more abundantly And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Lie. Liar. You shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. It's not God's words. It's His words. Is there anybody that can get it? Okay. Whose words? It's <laughs> Verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and was afraid. Why was he afraid? Because he started listening to a stranger's voice. Now he's afraid to go back to the voice that he originally heard. I am the good shepherd. Okay. My sheep hear my voice. They do not know the voice of a stranger. The thief comes only to steal and kill. But I've come that you might have life. If you keep my word, you shall be set free by truth. The devil is a liar and a murderer from the beginning. If my words find entrance in you, you'll be free. But if the voice of a stranger comes, you're going to surely die. God said you shall die. Then man heard the voice of God and he's afraid because he's now listening to two voices. Now he's struggling to discern who he's now speaking. I mean, God said I shall die. This one says I shall not die. Now I ate and now comes God and he says, what have you done? He says, I'm naked. God says, who told you you're naked? So his protection fell. The light that protected him, which was the life, has now fallen. And now he's in darkness. What do they do in darkness? They hide themselves. But he who loves God comes to the light. 
What does he do? So he's hiding. So he's going into darkness. No, he's not walking in the light. So what is he? What is he working in him? Death is now working in him. What does God want to work in him? Life. Verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us. To know good and evil. And blessing and calamity. That is not what he was supposed to know. Now he knows blessing and calamity. Now, lest he put forth his hand and take also from the tree of life. And eat and live forever. So God guarded the tree of life with a flaming sword. And he guarded the way to the tree of life. But Jesus died and opened the tree of life. Now if you eat of that tree, you shall never die. Okay, so Ezekiel or Zechariah 13 and Matthew 26 says, The time has come to slay the shepherd so that the tree of life may be opened. So when the shepherd laid down his life, the tree of life opened, and now God says, You can come and eat. What will happen if you eat? You shall never die, you shall surely live. Why do you want to die if you can live? Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.